European scientists will this morning take the initial step in what's being described as the most ambitious scientific experiment the world has ever seen. At the purpose-built underground centre near Geneva, they'll carry out limited tests on a machine called the Large Hadron Collider. The ultimate aim is to recreate conditions that existed immediately after the Big Bang. The team hope to pinpoint dark matter, the name given to unseen particles thought to exist all around us and throughout space. Après avoir fini de régler les électroaimants complètement, dans quelques jours, on va tenter de faire circuler deux faisceaux en sens inverse et en même temps. Et puis dans quelques semaines, après la fin de la batterie de test, les physiciens pourront commencer leur vrai travail. find something else which will replace because the Higgs boson is not something is not an object it's a concept which provides the mass possibly the mass of the different quark you know that the, the best understanding for us will be zero mass for all of them this is not true because we, you need a process to provide this was a proposal in 1963 by three people Higgs which was a professor from Scotland and two Belgian Engler and Hout 
which put at the same time the same hypothesis. But it remains an hypothesis. Nobody has been able now to prove that it exists. That's why we'll see, maybe. But if they don't exist, something else will show. Because we need a mechanism to come, to make the, the, the model we have consistent. You know, we know that we have measured their mass, and the theory will be much better if they have no mass at all. That's why we need something in between. And we know this is incoherent also, that we need more particles, more massive particles. We have, we know that we have uh, uh, some items, some indices, which will show that something is to be discovered. And this is that, which is the uniqueness of, of LHC, and the fact that it will produce discovery. And this is that which is exciting. CERN, as I say, is a singularity in the world of science. And it is an example to follow. Why? In general, you see between laboratory across borders, or even between countries across borders, they join to make a project. Well, it should be the, this is the space station, it should be, they do a project, they, they invest a lot of money, a lot of energy, and they stop. After. This is the general view of cooperation. CERN is just different. Is after the war, the belligerents in Europe have agreed to rebuild Europe as it was before the war, where, where most of the Nobel Prize winners were from, from Europe to rebuild Europe of science, and to do that, to take over the needs of a discipline for the, the future. Not for project, but just to build the discipline. And to build what goes with the discipline, which means the concept, the theory, the training, the education, the transfer of technology, all that. And that is the only example in the world I know of. The reason we do it, it brings to humanity a better knowledge of uh, humanity's place in the universe to understand where we are. We are looking down inside matter with a big microscope, if you like, and we've reached a certain scale. And with the LHC, we are increasing the magnification to go to one-tenth of the distance that we have looked so far. So we are yes, looking ten times deeper into matter to, just to satisfy our curiosity. Why is matter the way it is and not some other way? Es ist in solchen Fällen, sobald es so weit kommt, dass man sagt, ja, es könnte ja sein, dass schwarze Löcher entstehen, dann sagt, hat CERN ein anderes Gegenargument. Es sagt, es entstehen doch andauernd auch schwarze Löcher durch die Höhenstrahlung auf der Oberfläche der Erde. Und die müssten dann ja auch gefährlich sein. Und da lachen ja die Hühner, nicht? Wir leben ja noch. Die Erde lebt noch, die Sonne lebt noch, also kann, können die nicht gefährlich sein. Und das stimmt, die sind auch ungefährlich. Aber sie unterscheiden sich auch in einem entscheidenden Punkt von CERN. In CERN werden zwei schnelle Strahlen mit Protonen aufeinander geschossen, die beide ungefähr gleich schnell sind. Da, dadurch kriegt man doppelt so viel Energie, wie wenn man ein festes Target hat, das man beschießt. I'm sorry, I don't agree. I think the fact is that there are particles coming in from the cosmos onto the top of the atmosphere that en energy is far above those of the LHC. And if you look over, the, the, of course, the Earth's very big and they're very spread out and they're very few in number. But the Earth's big and it's been there a long time. In the history of the Earth, we have conducted effectively the entire LHC program 100,000 times. So if there was some real problem, it would have happened by now. Either on Earth, or in the Sun, or on Mars, or in a white dwarf star, we would have seen something, and we haven't. When CERN behauptet, es passiert andauernd in der Welt, ist es ein Irrtum. Das ist ein Public, wie sagt man das, ein Public Relations Gag. Es ist nett, aber es ist absolute Irreführung der Öffentlichkeit. Ah, there's going to be... Uh, I don't think there's going to be anything dangerous from it, but it will not go perfectly. There will be uh, wrong discoveries. People will say we made a discovery. Turns out it was a mistake in the detective. And these things happen. The history of science, all history is written by the people who win. So it all looks logical. Okay, you come from an ex-communist country, so you know this. Um, the history is written by the party, or it was written by the party. But the real history is full of mistakes, wrong directions, wrong experiments. And, at the t and when we look back in high particle physics, it looks very logical. But at the time, it was very confused and so on. But over time, we will find the truth, I think, and from the LHC about what is going on in these small distances.
The proton beam accomplishes its first full circle in the clockwise direction in just one hour, and the second in the opposite direction was successfully completed two hours later. This was an absolute record. It had taken LEP, the previous accelerator in 1989, 12 hours to accomplish what the LHC did in just 50 minutes with much more sophisticated components. Over the following days, the LHC team made spectacular progress and were able to keep a beam circulating for a considerable period of time. But after 10 days, while ramping up the current in the accelerator's magnets in preparation for 5 TEV running, an unexpected failure happened in one of the LHC's eight sectors. Today, we could uh, screw the last bolt to close the last bellow of the very last interconnection that we repaired. Till beginning of October, we couldn't come down to the tunnel because everything had to be put in safe conditions for workers. Then, when we started to work, we found a completely non-standard situation. Conditions in the sector were not very easy. It was very cold because of this uh, huge leak of uh, liquid helium and uh, because of the magnets that were still cold and were reheating. The damaged area was uh, roughly 60 interconnections. That means 60, 60 magnets. Then there were the beam lines where the, where the beam passed through that were completely damaged all over the sector. This because of this big overpressure that damaged all the bellows that are not very thick, just 0.3 millimeters thick. And this was for probably four fifth of the, of the sector. So several hundreds of cuts to do in difficult situation. We can say that more than a hundred people were involved working uh, full time for eight months to repair what we, what we accomplished today. Ja, es beweist sozusagen die Unkenntnis des Experimentators, die aber auch was Schönes ist. Nicht? An sich ist es ja toll, wenn man ein Experiment machen darf, wo man keine Theorie hat. Es ist ja geradezu Zauberlehrlingshaft, nicht? Es ist nur ein Zauberlehrling ist, wie Goethe eben in dem Gedicht sagt, äh, wie ist es, also ich kann es nicht mehr auswendig, was mit den Kräften ist, die ich rief. Die müssen ja wieder, also es kann passieren, dass dabei ein Ergebnis rauskommt, das irreversibel ist. intelligent beings in the galaxy, we should make sure we survive and continue. But we are entering an increasingly dangerous period of our history. Our population and our use of the finite resources of planet Earth are growing exponentially, along with our technical ability to change the environment for good or ill. Our genetic code still carries the selfish and aggressive instincts that were of survival advantage in the past. It will be difficult enough to avoid disaster in the next hundred years, let alone the next thousand or million. The ultimate goal is a complete theory of the universe, and we are making good progress.
dass, dass ich hier Zern schädigen soll, will ich ja nicht. Ich bin ja der einzige Zernfreund, sage ich immer. Aber wenn es den Effekt hätte, dass ich Zern hier schädige, täte mir das sehr leid. Denn allgemein ist auf der Welt die Tendenz, die Wissenschaft zurückzufahren, da sie als gefährlich angesehen wird. Und äh, man meint, dass sie ja, sie wird destabilisierend, weil man nicht vorhersehen kann, was dabei rauskommt. Und auf einmal ist eine andere Situation da als vorher. Und da können die Politiker nicht gut mit umgehen, mit unvorhergesehenen Sachen. Insofern ist das, wenn man will, ist das CERN das letzte Großprojekt des Zeitalters der Wissenschaft. Und nach dem CERN könnte das Zeitalter der Nachwissenschaft beginnen, das ich schon einläuten sehe in Europa, wo man mit allgemeinem Konsens die wissenschaftliche Bildung der jungen Menschen zurückgefahren hat und dabei ist zurückzufahren und niemand redet davon, alle tun so, als ob es was Positives wäre. Und CERN ist die, die, das letzte lichtvolle Großprojekt vor der nächsten Dunkelheit der Menschheit. Thank you very much.